What's up, Fight Fans? This is Sad from Global Fight Talk here with da David Mayer Galanis. Is that how you pronounce it? Derek Meyer Galanis. Meyer, excuse me. Uh, he's a former kickboxer, multiple time artist, former wrestler, very indulged in the fight game. Could you start us off with a little bit of background of uh, how you got into the fight business? Sure, Seth. So, you know, uh, I was a martial artist since the time I was about 11. Uh, I started training in Tung Sudo Mudaquan. Uh, for your listeners who don't know, just, just tell them to think Taekwondo. Uh, taekwondo is a sport, Tung Sudo is the art. But, you know, for me, it's the same thing because to me, it's about the fight. Um, so think good kicks. Uh, I trained in Tung Sudo uh, until I was about 25 when I switched over to a kickboxing career. Uh, I also boxed a little bit in there. And, and as you mentioned, I was a wrestler. Uh, I was a two-time Coastal League wrestling champion in high school, but I really wrestled since the first grade. So I've been grappling too. Um, you know, I loved kickboxing, but uh, you know, when I got out of prison the first time, MMA was in its craze. It was 2008. You know, I was in there when the show came on and saved the sport and really saved all the sports because, you know, we with, with the UFC, all combat sports have been floated. I mean, everybody is watching boxing more now, watching glory kickboxing, lion fights, Muay Thai, uh, and the jiu-jitsu. So, you know, what the UFC has done for all combat sports has been incredible, and I love them all. And have you thought about getting more immersed into MMA instead of, you know, I mean, kickboxing or, or boxing or anything like that just because of the platform that they have? Yeah, so let, let me give you a story about that, Seth. So when I started my kickboxing career, uh, I was a black belt in Tung Sudo, a national champion, and I heard there was a Muay Thai kickboxing guy in town. I said, oh, I'm, I'm in. I trained with the guy for about two months, had my first professional fight in Tijuana, Mexico. Um, needless to say, although I had some great moments because I was very good as, as what, what uh, Tung Sudo is, kicking, I didn't win the fight. And I didn't win the fight because you can't convert into a style that quickly. It's nearly impossible. You have to learn the intricacies. And especially for that style of kickboxing, it was the leg kicks and the leg checks. Um, so when I got out of prison, I started training with the MMA guys. One thing I noticed was my stand-up was days above them. Uh, you know, I'd been tongue shows since I was 11. I boxed a little bit and I, and I had a kickboxing career. But what I lacked was the Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So I spent about seven years learning Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And right before I went to prison again for the second time, I was a, a blue belt with about four stripes, three or four, I can't even remember now, on my belt. And, you know, when you're at that level and you're really good and you're dedicated, I was submitting brown belts occasionally. So I was right at the cusp of being ready to make my MMA debut. I did have a pancreation smoker that I won by armbar, um, and then I went to prison again. So you know that's that's been the story for me unfortunately i missed mma uh, i missed kickboxing through my own ignorance which is what i wrote the book about but you know sav what really my eyes are on now and what i'm ready for is is bare knuckle you know i came out this time and bare knuckles a new sport and look i mean there's nobody uh more ready to put on a bare knuckle display than me i'm ready i mean i learned a lot from your last guest kyle mcelroy and, uh, you know, one of the things he said was, you know, he alluded to the fact that he's had plenty of bare knuckle competitions outside the ring. Outside of, and, yeah, not professionally. Right. And, and by the way, so have I. Um, so, you know, to me, it just is a perfect match. And I learned a lot more from him beyond that. I mean, he, he said that, uh, first of all, I get a five fight contract for just the tryouts which was absolutely to me. I mean, why wouldn't I take that shot? I mean, you in prison, if nothing else, you get in great shape. You know, I'm in great cardio shape. Uh, I haven't been striking in a while, you know, other than some of those unsanctioned bouts. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, and I also learned you're not getting into BKFC unless you go to those tryouts. I mean, I've been making noise since I hit the streets because I was Joey Beltran's old sparring partner, uh, speaking of MMA. I used to beat Joey up uh, quite Quite frankly um so i'm thinking to myself look he's your heavyweight champ you know give me a shot i'll show you heavyweight champ and they've been real cold shouldered um and the bottom line is i've got to get to those tryouts i get off house arrest um in in september late september i'll, I'll go to the nearest one october november yeah i was going to ask you about that because he was pretty ad adamant about uh how you basically you're not getting in without with the without the tryouts and i know you've been reaching out to the guys at the bkfc 
you haven't really get, been getting any type of responses. But let me ask you this. How's your uh, social media presence? You know, uh, so new. Let's say this. When, when I went away, I was a Facebook guy, obviously, because everybody was by then. I got out uh, in 2008, my first time in prison, when MySpace was just going down and Facebook was just coming up. So I learned Facebook. I didn't learn any of the others. But by now, I know a lot about Twitter. I know a lot about Instagram. Instagram, I'm on TikTok, and I do videos in support of my books on all of them. Um, so yeah, no, I'm getting there. I'm not where I want to be. I'm much more versed as a martial artist than I am as a social media guy, but I'm getting yeah. there. Well, that's the thing. It's it's kind of a crazy time, um, and it's not just uh, sports, but uh, it's just life. I mean, social media is so important for so many different avenues to succeed. For example, you've got the next BKFC car coming up. Uh, the main event is Paige Van Zandt versus uh, Rachel Ostovich. Britton Hart is on the undercard. She beat Paige Van Zandt. I mean, it wasn't just like a, a route, but she won. It, it wasn't it wasn't close, you know. And so she was at the press conference and she got so upset about that. She just walked off because she's like, OK, I, I just beat this girl. Now she's in the main event and I'm fighting on the undercard because she's got a bigger following. You know what I mean? So. If if you if you're gonna make that transition in the BKFC, obviously do the um, the trial. But I think it's very important to get your uh, social media presence up. Well, you know, look, uh, Sam, I'm glad you brought it up. The one of the realities that you're talking about there, and I'm not taking away anything from Britain. She's a beautiful girl, but we know why Paige Van Zandt is so popular. And I'm not taking anything away from Paige. Paige yeah. is a baller. I love her. She fights hard. She goes for it, even when she loses. Um, but, you know, the simple fact of the matter is Paige is a model in there, and, and people mm -hmm. like to see that. I wrote in my book, my second book, Glory of the Light, about how, you know, when people get picked to be contenders a lot of times they get picked because of the way they look aesthetically um and that's certainly the case for van zan i'm not insulting her or her credibility but there might be a lot of fighters who can fight as good as Van Zant, but because they do not look like Van Zant, they're not going to get the opportunities Van Zant got. And I understand Britain Hart's complaint about that, but but guess what? That's not just the fight game. That's life in general. Um, you will not see an ugly quarterback, Sav. You know, and, and that <laughs> yeah, that transfers to martial arts. You know, that's I, I like that. I'm I'm, I'm going to use that in the future. I mean. Uh... Obviously, Paige Van Zandt is a very good fighter. I mean, she goes out there and she gives it her all every single time. She actually impressed me in her bare knuckle debut with Britton Hart. I I thought I thought it'd be a little bit more one sided, but um, I think she's probably gonna surprise a lot of people versus uh Ostovich as well. But let me ask you about something else. You spoke a little bit about weight cutting in your last interview. Uh, I'm a big big advocate for kicking it out of the whole sport, kicking it out of all combat sports. I, I don't I don't appreciate it at all. Um, but one one thing I, I was very interested in that you were talking about, like the, the the loss of blood in your brain or the oxygen in your brain when you cut weight. So you're more susceptible to being knocked out. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So it's water. Right. Water. So you know, obviously when you're losing the weight, you're dehydrating and the water in the brain plays a part in protecting the brain. Now, obviously, we have the skull, too, of course. Um, but, you know, you start depleting water from every part of your body. You don't determine where that water comes from. And, you know, when you're getting as sucked up as a lot of these MMA fighters get, um, you're going to lose water from the brain and it makes you susceptible to knockouts. And, you know, let's let's take a guy. Everybody knows I could use me. But why? Nobody knows me let's use joey beltran so joey had an almost impenetrable trend as a heavyweight in mma i think lavar johnson knocked him out but lavar johnson is probably one of the heaviest hitters in the game um but joey cut to 205 because he thought oh you know i've lost a few fights which by the way is a group think disease in mma and where does that come from it comes from wrestling Seth. Exactly. i remember being a 191 pound champion junior year uh, I cut weight over the summer, probably more for girls than, than athletics, but I got that down to about 175. I lost my first match and we had new coaches. Coach said to me, Derek, you got to cut to 65. Um, that is the wrestling solution to any problem, any loss. Got to cut into the weight class. Now, here's the problem, Seth. Uh, wrestling, God bless. It's, it's a great sport. I love doing it. I think it's great, but you're not getting hit in the head. 
Um, you are getting hit in the head in combat sports. Um, Joey had a real lackluster career at light heavyweight because uh, his impenetrable chin, uh, I can't say that word, so his impenetrable, we'll call it, chin was gone. Um, and, you know, and his one of his last fights, I remember I was sparring with Joey at a uh, uh, place in Oceanside. And he said to me, you know, Derek, I can make 185. And I thought to myself, God, this guy's a lunatic. But, you know, you don't say that to you. He's the star. You know, I'm not going to say, Joey, you're out of your mind. He cut, I believe, to fight Kendall Grove 185 and lost. Um, the reason Joey is BKFC heavyweight champion is because Joey's skills are cardio and a heavy chin. And he only has that heavy chin when he's got that water protecting his brain. Yeah, weight cutting, I'm with you, man. Weight cutting is for the birds. In wrestling, I understand why they do it. But in combat sports where you're getting in the head, it is very damaging. Now, look, do some people make use of it? Yes, Conor McGregor made a great show of it. Got his huge body down to featherweight, knocked out some of the greatest guys of all time. I think there were some PD changes at the same time, so I don't know that that was all of it. Um, but the fact of the matter is, for most people, including myself, weight cutting can damage your career. Right, and, and there's also guys like Anthony Johnson, who I think of now, you, you look at him walking around, he looks like a tank. And then you go back and look at him at 170. He's got my physique. He look, you know what I mean? He looks more like me than he looks like. He looks like he ate the old version of himself. And so it's like people are going up and down. And I'm just, I, I don't believe it's, 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 it's healthy for your body in the long run. And, and certainly not your brain. Well, Johnson's a great example because let's just look at it. And I, I talked about what happened to him. So he was cutting to 170, right? Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, because he was a college wrestler, I'm sure. And that's what he learned. Um, and, and so he's beating up guys like Charlie Brenneman and, and guys who shouldn't be in the ring with him. Um, but he's cutting so hard, he really can't be world class at that way. And he has world class potential. How do we know? Because when he finally got ejected, uh, from the UFC, went to World Series of Fighting, fought as a heavyweight, beat Andre Arlovsky. Andre Arlovsky comes back to UFC, wins like five straight fights. Anthony Johnson comes back, has two title shots against Cormier. So, you know, uh, he was destroying his body. And by the way, I will note too, excuse me, that when Johnson was leaving, his last fight in the UFC was against Vitor Belfort. And finally, at least he was trying to make 185. But really, that was too big a cut for him, too. So he missed weight for 185. They agreed on a catch weight to 195. But his body was so decimated by what he was doing, Belfort beat him anyway at 195. And it wasn't until he blew up again to heavyweight, was natural, then came back down to 205, which was a weight he could legitimately compete right. at. Uh, that that his career really was what it was because you know look Anthony Johnson could have been world champion absolutely hundred percent I thought he was gonna I thought he was gonna knock Cormier out and then I mean he made some mistakes it is what it is but yeah at two two oh five rumble is probably the most scary for me um, because he doesn't lose too much speed going down but he's still super dangerous super dangerous so let's talk a little bit more about you though uh, what kind of shape are you in right now. You know, so, Sav, let me tell you this. I was in incredible shape, the kind of shape you can only get in in prison. And I talk about that in Chapter 5 of my book. Look, I had a whole uh, kickboxing career where I never really understood what actual fight work was. Uh, but you get to prison and, and there's no distractions. You start learning about how to put in real, real hard work, two, three times a day, strength and conditioning. Uh, I came out the first time like an animal. Now, I was on track to doing it this time with one caveat. I was going to remain a heavyweight because I'm a big guy and that's how my body is. We just got done talking about that. And then COVID hit. So, you know, we were locked down 20, 23 hours a day in a little cell. Um, we couldn't get out. I did what I could. I fell off quite a bit. I can tell you, though, now that uh, I watched your video with Kyle McElroy and I realized I got to go to tryouts, I've turned it back up and I'm not that far from where I was. And of course, now I can hit bags. I can hit the wall. And, you know, those tryouts are not sparring. Not that I'd mind that. I'd actually prefer because I, I shine better when I'm actually fighting, not not uh, shadow boxing or whatever. But no, I'm getting there. And I'm sure by the end of September, I'll I'll be ready. That's good. So you, so you, um, you want to do the trials now, 
um, get into the BKFC. Obviously, you're going to have to fight your way up, though, to get that shot at uh, Beltron that you've been pulling for because you you can't just go in there and just fight the champion. You know what I mean? Well, I do understand that, but I, w- I do want to point something out, too, because I think it's important. Um, when Beltron won the Diamond Belt, he was 2-1-1. One, and one. And the champion he was fighting was 1-0-1. I mean, presumably, he won the championship when he had no wins in the BKFC. So, you know, I mean, I know these guys are throwing stuff like that out there. Uh, Fighting is done by promotions. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm an ex-Gambino crime family affiliate. That's how they list me in prison. I just got out of prison. I wrote in my book about, you know, beating Joey up. Um, This is something BKFC could market if they were so inclined. They are obviously not inclined to do that. And I understand that. And I got to fight my way up. And, you know, what really settled it for me was your, your interview with, with McElroy. I mean, look, if I have the potential of coming away with a, a five-fight contract, I'm not saying I would. I mean, look, McElroy's got a lot of advantages. He's, he's at uh, Jackson Winklejohn. Um, you know, when, when it's just like the, the Noah ugly quarterback thing we just talked about. When they know where you are, um, they look at you that way. Um, I've trained with Scrap Pack, with Quest, with Alliance, but the bottom line is I'm not any of their boys. Like, I, I don't represent those guys. And probably a lot of them are mad at me for the book because I didn't pull any punches on any of them. I, I let it fly. Um, so I'm an independent uh, and in a new city. So I would have that going against me. I'm not expecting a five fight contract but you know what's sad they give me a one fight contract I'm, I'm ready to go right and and those those um those trials they move them all over the place um obviously i covered the last one down here in dallas uh there's another one very recently in um albuquerque the one that uh, mcelroy was talking about and then i think there was one in like um colorado or something like that so they're they're moving all the way around they're, they're gonna give you an opportunity you know what I mean? If you just keep your ears to the to the game, um, but yeah, man, I'm excited. I hope you get to uh, get to one of those those trials. Can you talk about a little bit about your book, though? Yeah, sure. I mean, look, I, I wrote the book as a warning um, to other people involved involved in the fight game. I mean, look, the fight game is like the real world. Uh, It's no different than a street corner. I mean, people are going to come to you and tell you they can do this for you, they can do that for you, and they don't really care about you. I mean, they're using you. Um, You know, careers are managed, and they're managed by a lot of things. Um, Paige Van Zandt, we already talked about. I'm not taking anything away from her toughness, um, but she got a lot of breaks because of the way she looks. Um, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is a prime example. Um, I can tell you, honestly, I can be Chavez Jr. in a boxing match, just like Anderson Silva just did. Um, But, you know, you've never heard of me. And that's because Jr. is not only who he is, but he's a good looking guy, too. And he's very marketable. And they, you know, look, God bless the management. They made him 42 and 0 or something. He won a a WBC title, they stripped from Sergio Martinez. And then they had two scrubs battle for it that they knew he could beat. And they put him in there and he won it. And then, look, he took on Sergio Martinez and he was one punch away from knocking Sergio Martinez out who was a lineal middleweight so you know that's that's what you do for your fighter you know if you've got a fighter without talent and you can take him to a world title that means you are a brilliant manager so I've got nothing bad to say about the management but rather how the fight game works um it's not exactly fair I mean Chael Sonnen has got a video floating around Instagram right now and TikTok and Chael says look uh, you guys don't know who the best fighters are because a lot of the best fighters are sitting in gyms and never been given their chance. Um, you know, and, and then he went on, he, he uh, destroyed Andre Arlovsky's character. He said, look, Arlovsky was a media creation by Dana White. I'm not going to speak to that one way or the other. Uh, I do know Arlovsky's improved on the job, but it is true that you can take a fighter and make him better or worse. Um, you know, look, if Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. didn't have his push, he'd have been a sub-500 fighter guaranteed. Mm-hmm. As it is, they make him 42 and 1, 42 and 0, and he almost knocks out the little lineal middleweight champion in the world. So, you know, it, it's just the way the sport is. Uh, it's not ever going to change, whether it's under boxing style promotional rules or under the UFC. Uh, it is what it is. That, that's life. I mean, it, it works for some of, some of the guys. Like like you mentioned, Andre Avlaski ended up being the heavyweight champion earlier in the days, in, in the UFC days. Um, he's still he's still kicking. 
You know what I mean? He's he's got good performances in him. It, it didn't go exactly like they wanted it to, but he's still around. He's a he's a very well known name. It didn't work out for Paige Van Zandt. She, they were pushing her like the next best thing that's ever happened, and then she ran into Rose Namajunas, and that was probably one of the top five one sided fights I ever seen in my life. So, I mean, it's a dangerous game when you play it. I don't really appreciate it that much, but I mean, if you if you're a manager like you said. You're doing your job, you know. But as a fight fan uh, and a journalist, I think it's a dangerous game because sometimes you're getting your your fighters in uh, situations they shouldn't be in. Like, um, I don't know if you seen saw the girl that uh, Siniesta Estrada boxed uh, a couple of years ago. I mean, she went out there and just hit her with like a four piece combo and knocked her out early. Like, old girl didn't even get to get out of her out of her corner really. And going back and looking at her record, she fought like three different girls that never had fought before. They were just like hand-picked opponents, easy, and uh, obviously not fighters. Didn't fight before that, didn't fight after that. And then they put her in there with one of the best fighters in the world, Sydney Estrada, and she gets knocked unconscious in like five punches. So it's a dangerous game. And um, I mean, good luck to everybody that plays it. You know what I mean? Well, you know, uh, Sam, so the UFC has done a little bit to heal that, um, especially before when we weren't, we didn't have the Conor McGregor uh, megastars. What you saw were a lot of competitive fights, right? Because either way, the UFC wins. They don't care one way or the other. The reason kickboxing and boxing uh, has suffered is because the promotion, or ha promotion has somebody in mind that they want to win. So they need these scrubs to bring in to build their fighters up. You know, and there's a lot of been complaints about that. I mean, Jerry Cooney used to say, uh, they ruined my career by never having me fight anyone. No, Jerry Cooney took Larry Holmes into the 13th round or something and was winning the fight at one point before he got knocked out. You know, and Jerry Cooney was doing well against Foreman before Foreman knocked him out. So, you know... I the fight game is like life. Sometimes the breaks don't go our way. Um, and we sit there and we, we need something to blame. Oh, this is the reason. Um, and, you know, I, there's no right answer one way or the other. You know, you could say they did a great job with Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Or you could say that the system is completely corrupt. It depends the way you want to look at it. Well, I mean, he hasn't been brutally knocked out. So it, it's, it, you know what I mean? It's like, I guess it's not too bad. Um so did you watch um, Beltran's fight with Shoemaker? I did. What'd I you did, think? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so look, I, and I put this out in a little TikTok this morning. Uh, Joey's got two things going for him. Joey has tremendous cardio and Joey has tremendous chin. Um, now, as a fight stylistically, Joey just runs forward and he throws a million punches. And I noticed his trainers tried to give him some lateral movement, which he kind of looks stupid because Joey really can't uh, move laterally and it looked kind of ridiculous. Uh, did I think Shoemaker probably won the fight? Well, let me say this. I wasn't scoring. Um, I wanted to enjoy. And when I score, I've got to focus on other stuff. It's like when you're refing. Uh, I don't yeah. believe you should score and ref at the same time because you're worrying about other things. So I enjoyed it uh did i think shoemaker won probably as a viewer but again i was not sitting there looking at it that way um I, shoemaker's mistake is and i know this personally because i've sparred dozens of rounds with joey with Joey, you've got to go to the body. Uh, you go to Joey's body, then you come back to his head. You actually can stun Joey, if that's the right word, because Joey has got a brutally hard chin. So stun might not be the right word. It might be surprise. And, and Shoemaker headhunted. Uh, Shoemaker did wait for Joey to push into him, which I thought was very smart, because that's what Beltran's going to do. He's going to come forward anyway. And that's what I used to do. I said, why, why uh, move around? There's no point. I'll just wait for this guy, because I know he's coming anyway, and I'll counter punch him kind of a Juan Marquez, Marquez Mar what was his name Juan something Marquez the Pacquiao opponent uh, um, Juan Manuel Ron, Manuel Manuel that's yeah. what it is yeah so you know that's what I do with Joey and I think Shoemaker did it okay uh, but in the end man you got to take the title from the champ you, right. you gotta you gotta, you gotta go for it and and I will not say that Shoemaker went for it it was more like he stayed close in an even fight you know Right. So you do you feel like Beltran maybe um, overextends himself a little bit when he's trying to put pressure because he's he's obviously a pressure fighter. Well, look, Beltran is open to be hit at all times. And, and we've seen that. And, and
And Beltron's defense is his jaw, which is tremendous. Um, you know, that having been said, you can do some tricky things with Beltron. Um, I just mentioned one of them. Um, you can step aside on Beltron. Beltron and, and, and hit him body head. Um, I think Beltron's vulnerable. Uh, I thought it was an amazing amount of disrespect, all those heavyweights that got in the ring with him after he defended his title and wanted to talk to them because they're promoting themselves. And I think the guy said something like, you know, I'm very respectful. No, you're not. You wouldn't be in the ring disrupting this guy's interview. And, you know, Joey was dog tired. And and what's Joey going to do at that point? You know, he's not like Hector Lombard off from these guys but they had it coming for sure uh yeah i, I mean as as somebody that doesn't really uh advocate for people fighting outside of, outside of the bells i mean if if you're coming in the ring and you, and you want to get in somebody's face after their fight it should be hector lombard's reaction every time you know what i mean Absolutely. they can't steal my moment i've been training for several months for this fight and i just fought my ass off for five rounds and why are you in the ring? You know what I mean? And and one, this is about me. I right. just defended the heavyweight title. It's not about you. Right. And, and you know, yeah, it was it was really bad. I mean, look, I know their their ring, their circle is not very conducive to keeping people out like the cage is. <laughs> but they got to think about something, some way to deal with that. I don't know if that's the commission or if that's bare knuckle. But it was a cluster. Uh, well, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the I think it's the uh, bare knuckle. They they're trying to allow that uh, that type of promotion because I mean, so I'm, sometimes it sometimes it work like when um, Jenny Savage came in after Britton Hart won and tried to pour some water on or something like that. Anyway, <clears throat> you got anything else you had like you'd like to add? Any shout outs or uh, sponsors? Anything? No, look, if anyone wants to get a hold of me, I'm Derek Meyer Galanis on Facebook. On Twitter, I'm Galanis Meyer. Um, on Instagram, I'm Derek Galanis. Uh, and yeah, I'm here, guys. I mean, any questions, buy the books. I got two books. One is on crime. Uh, Hunter Biden is in that book. Uh, he should have been indicted with my brother and father on their case, but you know they let him go. He's the son of the president. That's how it works. Um, yeah, no, and, and martial arts is my passion. That's what I love. So any questions and comments, uh, hit me. And, I, you know, hopefully I see you guys in Bare Knuckle real soon. Man, I, I hope I get you uh, get you on the show again real soon, man. It was a pleasure. All right, I'm here. Whenever you want, Savvy, let me know. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to like, follow, and subscribe. Uh, Global Fight Talk for more fight news and content.